Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do two special dishes from the north east of England. Why I hinny. I'm going to make peas pudding and stotty cakes. That's peas pudding and stotty cakes. So in the UK, peas pudding or peas porridge or peas pottage has a long and venerable history. Um, it used to be commonplace all over the country and over the years, I don't know why, it's kind of contracted so that you only really find it in the North East, Northumberland, Newcastle, Durham um, and North Yorkshire and maybe Middle Yorkshire. You don't actually see it in Leeds really. And of course there's the famous kids nursery rhyme, peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold, peas porridge in the pot, nine days old, because it develops flavour from all that mould, oh yes. And the other thing is a stotty cake, which is basically a very large bread roll. It's baked in the bottom of the oven, like a, well, an oven bottom muffin kind of thing. It's pretty much like any other bread. It's just got a lovely name. Um, and stot in Geordie apparently means to bounce. So if, if you drop your stotties, they will bounce because they're so heavy. Yeah, right. Anyway, whatever it means, I love it. Stotty cake. If you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, etc. And let's get cooking. I'm going to start the peas pudding first because that takes longest because it needs a really nice ham broth or pork broth. And usually that's done by just boiling up a uh, ham hock. But I'm being a bit more elaborate, trying to get a bit more flavour in. And so I've, I've actually got pork shank, which is similar to a ham hock, except that comes from fairly high up the front leg and uh, ham hock is like the ankle of a back leg, I think. <laughs> it's very complicated. So I'll just put that in whole into a pan with some water. Also I've got some veggies just to add more flavour. Uh, a bit of celery, a couple of really tiny carrots because I forgot to get any more. A bay leaf and a scraggy onion with its skin on. Just chuck those in. I'll also probably add some pepper but probably not salt because the pork will probably be salty enough. We whack that on the stove, bring it to the boil, put the lid on and simmer for about an hour until the pork is cooked. While the stock is bubbling away I'm going to make the dough for the stotties. So I've got 300 grams of strong white bread flour and I've got 100 grams of lukewarm water and 100 grams of milk. And lukewarm means between 40 and 43 degrees Celsius. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of vegetable oil to that. And then we want a teaspoon each of yeast and sugar and salt. And completely optional secret ingredient is this, which I got the other day from Amazon, link down below, get some, it's really good. It's a dough improver. And I've only used it once the other day to make some um, bread rolls. And honestly, the difference is astonishing. It makes it rise a bit more and it just improves the overall texture. It makes it softer and more like commercial bread. And that's because commercial bakers use this all the time. They mainline on it. And you only use one to 2% of the weight of the flour uh, of this. So in this case, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. Now I'll just mix all the dry stuff together. And then add the milk and water and oil. And when it's all come together, we'll put the dough hook on and knead it for about five minutes. Okay, there we are. Nice blob of dough. Just drizzle a bit of oil on that. Just cover the dough in oil to stop it drying out. And cover it in plastic film. And put it somewhere warm until it's doubled in volume, which will take an hour or two. 
Okay, the dough has risen magnificently. And now we're going to make it unrise. We're going to knock it back. Bit of flour on the burnt top. Probably not that much. And grab, oh look, it's just fluff, full of air. I'm going to make two stotties and because of the size of them, I, I can't actually fit them into the air fryer oven. So I'll have to use the real one for the first time in many months. So just uh, roll those about, get them nice and smooth. And they should be uh, a couple of centimetres thick and whatever that is, round. They could be a bit bigger, but got a tray lined with greaseproof paper and some rice flour sprinkled on it. I'll cover them with a clean tea towel, which you may have seen before. <laughs> And just let those prove for another, what, 15, 30 minutes. They won't double in size this time. Okay, I'm going to deal with the stock and then we can think about making peas pudding. So I'll just strain it to a colander. And the pork shank is, uh, well, it's, it's gone a bit greyish because it wasn't a cured piece of meat. It was just normal. So, but I mean, that's, that's fine. Just doesn't look great. <laughs> These are for the double dippers. That actually needs salt. I'll have some white pepper while we're at it. That's much better. That's really nice. Mm -mm. Ooh. I like that. Okay, finally, we can introduce the main ingredient, which is this. It's yellow split peas. I've got 350 grams there. This particular brand doesn't need to be soaked, just needs a rinse under cold water. And basically you want twice as much liquid, which is the stock, as you have the split peas. So I'll just rinse those. There we go, nicely rinsey rinsey. And just pop those in a pan. It's important to know that, you know, the, these are not lentils and they're not the kind of marifat peas that we would use for mushy peas. I'm not exactly sure what yellow split peas are, but, you know, they are peas. You know, some kind of legume. And cover that with your lovely stock. And if, if you're um, doing a veg version or you just can't be bothered making your own ham stock, uh, just dissolve a stock cube in some water and you're done. Then you've saved yourself couple of hours but you know what I'm like <laughs> so pop that on the stove bring it to the boil and stir it every 10-15 minutes after about 40 minutes the peas should have turned into a mush and dissolved and absorbed the water and be more of a paste than blobs of peas in water okay now you want to Heat your oven to 160 degrees for a fan oven or a convection oven. That's 180 for a conventional one and I think that will be gas 5. I could be wrong. The oven bottom technique. I'm going to put this tray directly onto the bottom of the oven. And, um, but, you know, so traditionally uh, that would be the bottom of a baker's oven and with the door left open after, after you'd had a huge session baking stuff <laughs> so you were just using residual heat uh, so we can't we're not quite doing that the idea is it takes a bit more time and it develops a kind of chewy texture so fingers crossed one thing you do need to do which i forgot is make an indentation all the way down to the bottom with your finger and they don't usually have any kind of glaze or milk or you know anything on top so we'll put them in for about 20 minutes and see how we're doing. After 20 minutes for the stotties, we can flip them over and cook them for another 10 minutes and then turn off the heat, uh, open the door slightly and leave them in there for a further 10 minutes. So we've had 40 minutes all together and they should then be wonderful. Okay, I reckon the stotties are done. I 
I should probably call them mini stotties to shut up the purists because they should be quite a bit bigger than that. But you know, we're only little. They look great. When I made this on this channel the first time, it was 2014, that's a very long time ago. And I put onion in it at the start and uh, I got slagged off somewhat for that. Although that's how my mother made it and you know, we came from County Durham. So um, some people like that, some people don't. Uh, I've not done it in this one. Mm. Some butter. Stir that in, get that melted. Gives it a nice smoothy texture. And now I think I should taste it. That is nice, but I am actually gonna whiz it with the blender because it is a bit too coarse. Okay, that looks uh, pretty good. Looks like hummus, actually. And, uh, mm. oh, that is lovely. It is so much more than boiled yellow split peas. It's the liquid that it was boiled in, the stock, that really gives it a, gives it a lift and flavor. I think I'll transfer that to a loaf tin or something and leave it in the fridge overnight. And then we'll do a taste test in the morning, even though, we already know it tastes great. So the thing with the stotty is, it's basically, it's a flatbread. It's not a loaf as such. So you cut it horizontally and stuff your stuff in. And I'm not gonna put any of that pork in cause you know, it's, it looks too gray and unpleasant. Just spread a generous amount of peas pudding. All right, here we go. Taste test time. Peas pudding and study cake. Yeah, I think I've smashed it. That, um, that study is well chewy. <laughs> the peas pudding is lovely fantastic historical food and very very tasty so have a go it's really good thanks for watching and see you next time